Mark, this must surely rank as one of the more bizarre things that you've ticked off in your career to date. Absolutely. I think uh, I'd never in my wildest dreams expect them to uh, clo- close a bridge to uh, run a Formula 1 car across it, but a uh, really special day, obviously. You know, you've got the, uh, the Aussie flags on top of the bridge when you grow up as a young Australian. This is- Every now and then in Australia, we like to argue or debate about where Formula 1 should race. Should we go back to Adelaide? What about Perth? Sydney? Or just keep it in Melbourne? This conversation often returns to the surface whenever it's time for Melbourne to extend their contract with Formula 1, and to no surprise, it's mainly the media that are always hyping up the story as if a different state is going to come along and steal the big race from Melbourne. But as history shows, that never happens. This has been happening since Melbourne secretly stole the Formula 1 Grand Prix from Adelaide in a secret deal back in the 90s. I made a full video about this, which you can check out either in the cards or in the description. In this video, I want to talk about the idea of Sydney making a move to hold the race. There have been a few instances where Sydney step up to take the race from Albert Park, but today I'm just going to cover the main ones that I find the most interesting and fun. I also want to explain why a race in Sydney is impossible, but would also be one of the biggest spectacles in all of sports. Let's first rewind to 2008 when Sydney stepped in and offered to hold the race after 2010 when Melbourne's contract would expire. This was not just a random offer from Sydney, it went a little bit deeper than that. Bernie Eccleston was an ambitious man with, well, some different ideas. Around the time of 2008, Bernie had a huge interest in night races but also wanted to appease the European audience. That year in 2008, we were going to see the first ever night race in Formula 1 being Singapore. So Bernie said Melbourne must hold a night race or the contract would not be renewed past 2010. Long story short, the Victorian government were not keen on holding a night race and Sydney saw this as an opportunity to step in and try snatch the race from Melbourne. The state government were never actually in serious talks with Formula 1 in this instance, but they did express their interest in the event if anything was to change with Melbourne. In other words, the New South Wales government were ready waiting, just in case the relationship between Formula 1 and the Victorian government turned sour. New South Wales were once again confident in 2010, when at the time Premier Christina Keneally announced that the state government would make a bid for the race after Melbourne's contract expired in 2010 with the location of the race being Homebush, right in the heart of Sydney's Olympic Park. Something that seemed like a pretty good idea until you saw the circuit layout. A layout that for me is a bit of a letterbox. This would have been a racetrack that I don't think would have been deserving of a spot on the F1 calendar. I mean, we can't be going from Dick Smith Corner to 130R at Suzuka. That's just embarrassing. Come on Australia, we can do better. Let's jump forward to 2012, where Bernie once again expressed his interest for a night race, saying night race or no race for Australia. A very similar deal to 2008, but the race would of course stay in Melbourne. And when Bernie made these comments in 2012, the contract between Formula 1 and Melbourne was until 2015. Bernie said he would respect the contract, but after that, he wasn't too bothered about leaving Australia altogether, saying, the race itself, from our point of view, is probably the least viable out of all the races we have. I'll admit, as a young kid, I always had an irrational fear of Formula 1 being taken away from Melbourne and switching to a different state. I always wanted F1 to be in my state, but at a permanent, purpose-built racetrack. This was more so I felt secure about it, I guess. The problem is, we don't quite have that in Victoria. Well, suitable for Formula 1 at least. And for those saying Phillip Island, it's much more geared towards motorcycle racing, and it's a grade 3 circuit. Though part of me always wanted Melbourne to have a permanent, world-class facility that was recognised across the globe, another part of me has a strong connection to Albert Park. It's definitely my favourite area in Melbourne. The whole vibe of that place just screams Formula 1, and it's totally embedded there now, and it's such a great place to visit from time to time. There is still another instance where Sydney tried to take the race again, but this time it was in 2015. At the time Premier Mike Baird announced that if re-elected, the government would make a bid to host the race. There were plenty of ideas for track layout, with the Opera House and Sydney Harbour Bridge being included, but this would mean chicanes on the bridge were essential due to the surface, which would have caused cars to lift and take off, and the idea of that on the Sydney Harbour Bridge is, well it's just terrifying. 
I will be honest, I love the idea of Sydney including these massive tourist attractions and iconic locations in the layout, but it simply isn't possible. Over 150,000 cars cross the Sydney Harbour Bridge every day as well as 450 trains. Sydney also takes the crown for being the most congested city in Australia. Plus, not only would you have to close the bridge, but all the other surrounding roads which would be included in the circuit. I think the home of Formula 1 is at Albert Park, but I'd be a liar if I told you I didn't think about a race over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Sydney Harbour, in my opinion, is the best looking site near a major Australian city. It would be quite an amazing spectacle, but something that just simply isn't possible. This doesn't mean we haven't seen a Formula 1 car on the bridge before. Back in 2005, in the build-up to the Australian Grand Prix, Mark Webber took his screaming Williams over the bridge for everyone to see, including 300 million people watching on television. A truly amazing sight, and something we might not ever see again. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload and you won't miss a thing. And with all that being said, thank you very much for watching.